Welcome to Module 2 of the Online Tool for Designing Ventilation Systems to Reduce Manure Pit and Entry Risk. In this module, we will focus on the, the input data and the simulation results for standalone manure pits. We will first go through the process, and then we will do a case study and review and interpret the results. So what we'll do is we'll define the design case that we're going to look at today. We will then create the input file for a standalone manure pit. Then we'll review the model, show you some of the ways you can check whether you have inputted things properly or improperly. We will show how to initiate a study solution how to access those results and view the results, and then how to interpret the results from the resulting simulation. So we're going to look at standalone manure tanks. And this is a sketch of a, not a typical uh, standalone manure tank, but a standalone manure tank with all the possible variations that we can use in the design tool. We can have slotted or solid covered manure tanks. I understand the most standalone manure tanks would be solid covered, but we could also use slotted covered if we wish. We can or cannot include pump out annexes, and I've shown them here. They could be located on any one of the four sides of the standalone manure tank. In the Annex in the back side wall, shown here, you see a red dot, a red circle. Well, that's just to indicate that our manure pit fan, ventilation fan, could be located in one of these annexes. If we don't have an annex, of course, it could be located in the floor. And it could be located, for example, at a pump-out port. Or it could be located at a personnel uh, access port. We can have, we can sim we can input access openings, pump openings, up to two of them, in the so in the solid covered floor or in the slotted covered floor. We can put divider walls with or without perforations in the manure pit, and we can put obstructions to airflow in the manure pit if they exist in your particular situation. Now we need to talk about some of the constraints and the assumptions that we incorporated into the online tool, some of which can be restricted and uh, released and some which cannot be released. Pit ventilation is always a positive pressure ventilation system. This is a constraint that cannot be released. We chose positive pressure because many, especially slotted covered manure storage pits, uh, you know, those, those manure storage pits are subject to, very sensitive to short circuiting. And a positive pressure system is a little more forgiving than is a negative pressure system in short circuited ventilation uh, situations. The default initial conditions inside the manure pit are uh, we assume that the manure pit is empty. We're also assuming no agitation and that there's minimal gas being generated. In other words, we only have the existing manure pit gas inside the pit. And when I say a manure pit is empty, you, maybe you can have say, 6 to 12 inches of residual manure in the bottom of the pit. But uh, we're not talking about situations where the pit is half full, three quarters full, or anything like that. The initial gas concentrations are the default conditions are 100 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide, 700 parts per million of carbon dioxide, 15,000 of methane, and 240 of ammonia. And any one of these four can be changed by the user. 
So if you go in and with a monitor or with a, a gas detection device, you find that your hydrogen sulfide concentration is only 50 parts per million, well, fine, you can override the 100 and put in 50. And the same for the other gases. The initial oxygen content concentration inside the pit is assumed to be zero parts per million, and this cannot be changed. So what that would do is, you know, let's suppose your oxygen content happens to be 10% by volume uh, initially. Well, then the results of the gas replenishment simulation would be conservative, and it would uh, certainly be satisfactory. The default manure configuration assumes that the pit fan, the manure pit ventilation fan, draws air from a mix of fresh and contaminated gas evacuated from the pit. Now, the user can override that. If the manure pit fan has a duct that draws fresh air from a, a distance from the manure pit cover, and it brings in atmospheric air, you can override and you can uh, use atmospheric fresh air or manure pit ventilation air conditions. We assume the default condition is that we have no obstructions in the pit and there are no divider walls in the pit. There are no pump out annexes in the pit. The default condition is that the pit cover is totally slotted, and that can be changed. And the default condition for the manure pit uh, air direction is that the manure pit fan directs air in a direction downward and perpendicular to the pit cover. And of course, this can be changed by using the pit fan elbow that we discussed in module number one. So the manure pit design case that we're going to study for the rest of this session is a 25 foot wide by 30 foot long by 8 foot deep manure pit with a solid cover. We're going to assume that we have a manure pit ventilation rate of 6,500 CFM, cubic feet per minute. The cover type is, sol is solid, covered. And the initial conditions for gas concentration is 120 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide, 300 parts per million of ammonia, 85,000 parts per million of, of methane, and 70,000 parts per million of carbon dioxide. The ventilation air source is going to be a mix of fresh air and exhausted pit air. So we call this a recirculation mode, if you will. The fan diameter is a two-foot diameter fan, and it's offset three feet from the front left corner in both directions. The outlets, the air outlets for pit, fan vent pit ventilation, we have one. It's three feet rectangular, three feet by three feet, and it's offset 25 feet in the long direction and 20 feet in the narrow direction, respectively. And that is from the front left corner. That's measured from the front left corner of the manure pit as you're looking at it. So what we'll do is we'll access the online tool by going to the website, ventdesign.agsafety.psu.edu. I assume that you have already put in your credentials, your user ID and your password that you have registered with us for that. So you simply click on to the login prompt, then you input the user ID that you registered with us and the password you registered with us. Once you've done that, you click the login, and that will bring up a screen looking similar to this that, that asks you for information about this online tool and so forth. And, of course, we're in the business of uh, creating a new CFD study because we've got to tell the computer what our geometry is and what our ventilation configuration and so forth is. So we'll click on to that. And when we do, we get this screen. 
Got to give ourselves a project name. We call this My Standalone Pit. Uh, you would give yours a name that's meaningful to you. And this is required. You must put in a project name because we don't know but what you might input two or three or four projects. And then when the results come back, you need to know how to identify the results that you are accessing when you do so. Then below there, there's uh, some optional information, you know, uh, your address and just logistical information about the kinds of manure system that you're using and so forth, your animal types, etc. That's all optional stuff. Uh, you can choose to do that or not use. So then we'll come down and we'll choose a pit type, rectangular. And then under his barn type, where we either have a barn or we don't have a barn. In this case, it's a standalone manure tank, so we would click the button for no barn information. And that's another way of saying a standalone manure pit. So then we'll continue and go forward. And the next screen that would come up looks like this, and it asks for your pit geometry. Now, we have a caution sign here, and to remind us that there are some default values put into the computer, and you will need to change these default values to the values that you have. For example, our pit fan is not a 5500 CFM, it's 6500 CFM. So you just have to be cautious about doing that and making sure that a default value doesn't sneak in every now and then. So we'll enter our manure pit fan flow rate, 6,500. Then we will look at the next one. It says, uh, you know, do we have ducted fresh air? No, we don't. So uh, we won't check that box for our case. Then we'll re-input the initial manure pit contaminant gas concentrations. You don't have to put in the oxygen because that's a default, a non-changeable default value of zero parts per million. Then you simply scroll down, use the, the scroll bar, and the next thing we'll see is the input data, or the input screen for the manure pit geometry. First thing you input is your cover thickness, then the length of your manure pit is 30 feet, your width of 25 feet, and this, this is in feet and inches. Got to input both of those, got to make sure they're right. And the depth of our pit is 8 feet, 0 inches. And we'll scroll down again. And now we get the opportunity to input the inlet fan. The diameter of our fan we said was 2 feet. The offset of that inlet, notice our origin is in the bottom left corner. And we said that that fan was offset from the origin by three feet in the x direction and three feet in the y direction. And then we have our offset angles. And I'll describe, discuss that in a little more detail. Let me just say that if your fan is located in the domain of the within the, the, the footprint of the manure pit cover, the offset angles will be 90 degrees. The X offset will be 90, and the Y offset will be 90. If, on the other hand, you would have a pit fan that's located outside of that footprint of the manure pit, say like with a, a pump-out annex, then those offset angles would be different. And we will discuss those in some detail a little later on, either in this section or, again, in module number two. So now we will scroll down, and we have to define some other things. The, uh, we go to the, the pit fan discharge elbow. We don't click that because we're just going to direct our air perpendicular to the downward, perpendicular to the cover. And then the slotted cover is the default, so we have to uncheck that 
because we have a solid covered floor. And now we can define our outlets. So we'll click number one. And we put in our outlet dimensions. They're three feet by three feet. And the X direction is three feet. And the Y direction is three feet. And the offset in the X direction of 20 feet. And the offset in the Y direction of 25 feet. And some of you will say, wait a minute, that's not correct. Well, that's you're right. But I did that for a purpose. So we're going to assume that I put in 20 in the X direction and 25 in the Y direction the Y direction for the offset, the location of that, because what we're going to do is show how the check constraints feature of the online tool is useful. So we'll click on here on the check constraints right now, and you could also generate a preview, or we could save our study, We'll do that later. That's why that's in dash. That's just uh, to highlight what these buttons are. Let's go back here and check. We click check constraints. And then it'll tell you, please wait while you're checking constraints. And when it's finished with that, it'll come back and give us report and say, whoa, there's an error. That's got to be changed. Got to be corrected. And sure enough, we go down to our Y offset. And, my goodness, our Y offset, we said it was 25 feet, and that's, that's, that, that's a larger offset than, our, uh, than the width of our manure pit in the Y direction. And so we have a constraint check that identifies that and alerts us to the fact that we made a typo or some other kind of error. So that just alerts us and tells us, hey, let's go back and let's change that. So we'll come back over here, and our X offset is 25, and our Y offset is 20. And then if we would go back and say, well, let's check the constraints again, and everything would be fine, and we wouldn't get that message. Okay? So we check it, and we're all right. We didn't get an error message this time. So now another way we can check... You know, we still want to check to see where our in our, our fan was located and where our outlet port was located. We can generate a preview. That's we can generate a 3D sketch. So if we click on generate preview, then you'll get a message that it's working. Program is working to generate that preview. When it's finished, it says it's a preview ready. So you click on to view the pit preview you click onto that you get a screen like this and then you click onto a 3d preview P PDF click onto that send the link and then you will get a screen that looks like this and this is a 3d version of the manure pit the red spot the red box is just a, a domain of within which our manure pit exists, and the blue part is the cover of the manure pit. And it shows the red circle, that's the location of the fan. The black rectangular box is the location of the access or the air outlet, the manure pit ventilation air outlet. Now what you can do once you get into this is, you know, you can rotate the thing and you can cut it away and look at different portions of the manure pit I can't do that with the PowerPoint it doesn't give me the, the PowerPoint didn't give me the, the the capability of doing it when you do access this and get it onto your screen you would be able to do all the rotating and so forth and I'm going to give you a, a little example of how you can do that so here you go, you can zoom, you know, you can go to the menu on this 3D preview, and you can rotate it, and uh, look at it from all different angles if you wish. We 
we'll just let this do its thing. So you can do a, a bunch of things with it. If you want to do an optional exercise now, or you can do it after at the conclusion of this presentation, if you'd like to play with this 3D image for the manure pit that we just inputted, pause the workshop presentation, go to ventilationdesign.sagsafety again, and then click on to a button that says Supplemental Results File. In that Supplemental Results File, select Module Number 2, and in Module 2, select Rotating 3D SA Preview, that standalone preview. And then when you're in there, do the right clicking, you know, and rotate it, cut away the cover, look at, you know, look at all the different features of that uh, 3D view, and you'll see that it's quite powerful and interesting. And the real value of that is that it allows you to see, you know, with a bird's eye view, whether you made gross input errors. After you've done that, you know, if you're doing it now, if you're going to pause and do it now, then after you're finished viewing, simply return to this workshop module and resume this workshop presentation. If you do this after the conclusion of this module one workshop session, you know, then, you know, you just do it when you're done, you're done. Okay. So now we've inputted the data, we've checked our constraints, we've generated a preview, we'll look at it, we're happy with what we have. Now we'll save the new study. Click that button. But now it comes up and gives you a prompt. Are you sure you want to save this study and generate results? Now the reason we're so cautious about this is because if your input data isn't quite correct, or if your input data isn't complete, and you click OK, it's going to try us to simulate the case that you inputted. So this is just a reminder. Don't input things. Don't save a study until your input data is completed. Otherwise, you get garbage out for your results. Now, if you're only if you're totally satisfied, click the OK button. You click that OK button, it's going to save your results, and then it's going to tell you it's working. And what will happen, what's happening now is it is inputting your data, compiling your data, and putting it into the format suitable for a SOLIDWORKS CFD run. And then you get a screen like this. It says your study has been generated and saved. You'll be notified when your results are available by email. And this might take anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours to conduct the simulation. So go on and do other things for a little while. When the simulation is done, you will get an email that says your results are ready. Once you get your results, then access Vent Design Ag Safety PSU.edu again. Now we're going to click on to View Results, slash Edit Studies. Then a screen will come up with a list of projects that you have inputted. The only one we've inputted so far is my standalone pit. So obviously you'd click on to that, view the results. And then you get a screen like this that has your results. You click on to results. And you get this menu. And you see you have animations, a whole bunch of animations of horizontal and vertical cross sections for each of the contaminant gases and for oxygen inside the pit. And at the bottom you have the results files in Excel format that gives you the decay curves of the oxygen replenishment curves. So we will begin by looking at the oxygen, re the uh, decay and oxygen replenishment curves. We'll click on to that. And for the case that we looked at, that we're studying, that we just simulated, 
There's the ox there's the hydrogen sulfide to decay inside the manure storage. Notice the menu bar at the bottom for the pit, hydrogen sulfide, concentration versus time of ventilation of the pit. And notice that the decay curve is not for a single point inside the pit. This is the maximum concentration of hydrogen sulfide anywhere inside the manure storage as a function of ventilation time. It gives the TPEL to get to 10 parts per million, 134 seconds. Gives you the TPEL for ventilating down to the NIOSH, one part per million value, and you get there in 200, after 218 seconds of ventilation. This is the oxygen replenishment curve. We got that by clicking on to the pit O2 curve. This is how long it takes to replenish oxygen anywhere in the pit from zero up to 19.5% oxygen by volume. 19.5% is 19,195,000 ,000 parts per million. In this case, it told us that it takes 140 seconds of ventilation to get to that point. Then we click on to ammonia, and it tells us that it takes 134 seconds to get down to, and we report the revised or the new, more stringent level of 35 parts per million. And of course, if you want a different level for your minimum, uh, maximum NH3 before you enter, you can pick from the curve something else. For example, let's suppose you decide that you don't want anyone to enter until you get to 10 parts per million. Well, then you simply go down to 10 parts per million and go to the curve, go across on the curve and find that that is somewhere around 275 to 280 seconds. So you certainly can do that. This is the maximum concentration of carbon dioxide inside the pit, anywhere inside the pit. And it takes 139 seconds of ventilation to get that down to the TPEL of 5,000. And then we go to the last gas, that is methane. And to get down to that uh, 1,000 part per million, it takes 202 seconds of ventilation time. Now, the next thing that we can do, we'll, we'll go back to our results, and we can look at the animation curve. So we'll look at the, you remember, we have all the different gases. This would be a front pit plane. That would be at the one quarter across the width, the vertical section, vertical cross section of the pit. And we click on that, and that would download that, uh, that animation. Or you could select uh, some other ones. And that would select this cross-section. It's a vertical cross-section to the longitudinal axis, uh, one quarter of the width across. Now, looking at the color schemes on this, you notice over here we have the legends. And for hydrogen sulfide, Anytime the concentration gets 100 parts per million or greater, it's red. If it's zero parts per million, it's dark blue. 50 parts per million would be uh, a light green, and 40 parts, uh, 20 parts per million would be the medium to light blue color. So our goal is to get that manure pit down so that it's all light blue or light green or, or uh, darker blue. Now you notice in this, the, the, the large blue box up above with that plume, that is all outside air. That's not inside the pit. It's the smaller rectangle down below that big blue box represents the manure pit. Of course, it has a lot of red in it because we had 120 parts per million to begin with. And for each of the other contaminant gases, we have 
the colors and the concentrations. Notice that for methane, red is at 50,000, blue is at zero. So uh, it's a different color scheme, isn't it? So we had to do that. We had to have a different legend for the different ones because, you know, the the allowable levels and so forth are so different for each of the gases. Over in the case of oxygen, and this was a programming limitation within SolidWorks and our ability to extract. Uh, in the case of oxygen, blue is bad and green is good because blue represents 0% oxygen and green represents 19.5 or greater percent oxygen. So it's not a problem, but you have to be aware of that when you view these uh, when you view these uh, animation plots. So now we'll scroll down, and we have incorporated into this some definition sketches that identify the locations of the different cut planes, okay, the vertical and the horizontal. And these are some sample results. Here in the upper left, we have the uh, cut plane six inches above the floor, above the manure pit floor. This won't be too terribly exciting because that's outside the domain of the, uh, of the manure pit. And uh, it's dark blue to begin with because that is the uh, atmospheric conditions. And the only place we have anything else is right in the area of the air exhaust uh, port, OK? Inside the manure pit at the mid-height, you see that this hydrogen sulfide you know, begins as being totally red. And then by the time we get uh, to 120 seconds, most of that manure pit is dark blue, which means zero parts per million of hydrogen sulfide. And it just in the direct vicinity of the manure pit, we're probably, of the opening rather, the exhaust uh, area, uh, we still have some zones that, you know, are, at, at are approximately uh, 30 to 40 parts per million still. The upper right, this is the vertical section at one quarter of the, it's a longitudinal section, one quarter of the width of the building. And again, we see that after 120 seconds, mostly evacuated to zero parts per million of hydrogen sulfide and just a little pocket there still. And of course, if we would have continued this animation a little longer, you know, that would have taken care of that. And then, the bottom right is the animation of the concentration at the longitudinal axis at the uh, mid-width of the manure pit. And after 120 seconds, that is, we have a little, it took a little bit longer there. And if uh, that, that's probably a consequence of the uh, the location, relative location of the fan, which is in the bottom left corner in the upper left figure, and the air outlet is in the upper right corner of the upper left figure. So uh, you see that the different longitudinal sections give a little different uh, air evacuation pattern inside the manure pit. This is an example of the Oxygen replenishment, now let's get oriented. The green portion above, that's atmospheric. That, the oxygen level there is at about 20, 19 and a half to 20 percent by volume. The dark blue is the manure pit, which we are assuming is at zero parts per million when we start ventilating. Now we'll start the animation and you see we get up here to 30 seconds after ventilation commenced. We're starting to get uh, closer to where we want to be 
at 100 seconds, we see that half of that place is green. At 120 seconds, we still have a small pocket there that is not quite up to 19%. That's probably about 15%, uh, something like that. And so we'd have to ventilate a little longer to get the oxygen up to the appropriate level. Now, the example that we did didn't include all the optional features. Did that on purpose because we want to learn how to basically lose, use the tool before we start adding a lot of the optional features. You certainly could add a slotted cover. You could add divider walls into that pit. You could add pump out annexes if you wish. You could pump, you could uh, locate the pit ventilation fan in those annexes. You can include obstructions and divider walls. You can change the direction of airflow discharge from the manure pit ventilation fan by using the fan discharge elbow and so forth. But we haven't done that in this tool. In this example, we just wanted it to give you the basics and, uh, and so forth. Now, what we will do in module number three is we will look at a tunnel ventilated barn above a slotted covered manure pit. Then that will show us how to add a barn and its ventilation system to a uh, manure pit case study. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact either myself or Dennis Murphy at the email addresses shown on this slide. And we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in module number three, which will be on tunnel ventilated barns above slotted covered manure pits. Thank you and good day.